Hi, I'm from the internet. Um, <clears throat> and I'm here to talk to you guys tonight about science. Specifically, I'm here to answer a scientific mystery that's been bothering me literally all week. Why did humans evolve long hair on their heads? And that's the question I'm going to answer for you tonight. But before I get to that, um, you're probably wondering why the guy who draws butt jokes on the internet is teaching science to a bunch of MIT students. <laughs> so before I get into my theory, um, I want to give you um, a brief background on my own, I guess, humble scientific achievements. Um, last year, I solved world hunger with my exponential Oreo theory. <clears throat> and it goes basically like this. The first Oreo was introduced in 1912. The double stuff Oreo. <laughs> you can see where I'm going. The double stuff Oreo was introduced in 1976, and the mega stuff Oreo came out in 2013, each time doubling the amount of stuffing. So when I graphed the um, doubling of the stuffing against the decreasing time interval between stuff doubling, um, I was able to determine that on February 8th, 2079, <laughs> <laughs> a single Oreo will be one mile thick and contain 12 million calories. <laughs> On a more troubling note, I also learned that um, nine days later, a single Oreo will exceed the width of the universe. <laughs> No one knows what'll happen then, but I bet it'll be delicious. But, <laughs> but um, I'm not here to talk about cookies or breaking the universe. I'm here to talk about hair. Why did humans evolve long hair on their heads? Now, like the current theory, I guess, by um, scientists or whatever, is that long hair is the result of sexual selection. In other words, um, potential mates found long hair attractive. And to that, I offer this counter argument. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a much stronger, much simpler theory. Let's look at three facts. Humans are the only animal on Earth that can choose their hair length. Human hair is greasier than that of most land mammals. This is why you have bad hair days, but your dog doesn't. And third, early humans populated almost every ecosystem on Earth, each one full of unique predators and dangers. So um, these three facts led me to one fairly obvious conclusion, which is that humans evolved long hair so they could style it into animal shapes <laughs> to scare off predators. Um, this phenomenon is actually well known in nature already, and it's called mimicry. Um, <laughs> mimicry is basically when one animal resembles another in order to scare predators, to frighten away <laughs> potential, <laughs> potential bad guys. <clears throat> um, and I propose that early humans adaptively styled their hair as they spread around the world in order to deal with different predators in different ecosystems. <laughs> For example, um, a prairie or a woodland-dwelling tribe might prefer the beehive, um, whereas like, a coastal community might prefer something more like this. <laughs> yeah, so that's my theory. Um, let's discuss evidence. First of all, there's modern evidence, modern observational evidence. When we, when we go outside, we see intimidating hairstyles everywhere. Um, spiked hair, mohawks, bald people. Uh, there's a positive correlation between scary hairstyles and being part of a rough crowd. <laughs> but anecdotal evidence isn't enough. We need hard evidence. We need, we need geography. We need artifacts. We need genetics. Um, so to start with, if my theory is true, we'd expect one thing. We would expect that as humans spread further out of Africa and populated the planet, they would encounter more and more diverse predators as they went. <laughs> uh, we would expect that hair length should increase in order, to, in order for humans to create more complex animals and shapes. And this has been found to be true, according to this slightly racist Darwin quote that I found. <laughs> <clears throat> 
<clears throat> there is an extraordinary difference in the length of hair in the different races. In the Negro, the hair forms a mere curly mats. With us, meaning Anglo-Saxon in his case, it is of great length. And with the American natives, it not rarely reaches the ground. Um, I wasn't able to find any data beyond this quote, but I figure, I mean, he's Darwin. <laughs> it's, it's a, <laughs> I figure it's a, we can trust him on these kinds of things. Um, something else we'd expect to find is evidence of hairstyling tools. You would expect to see sharp objects in the same places that humans settled, and we find these in abundance. <laughs> and lastly, as we all know, styling hair requires water. And sure enough, every civilization that we know of <laughs> has begun near a water source. So, um, in conclusion, I believe that every piece of evidence that I've chosen to include points to my theory <laughs> being absolutely true. Humans evolved long hair to fake out predators. But here's something interesting. If this theory is true, and it is, um, <laughs> would it work the other way? Could we mimic friendly animals to gain the trust of other people, mimic safer animals? And the answer to that is yes, and I've I've proven that tonight, actually, by experimenting on all of you. Um, I've actually <clears throat> convinced an entire room of MIT students to take me seriously simply by mimicking the hairstyle of the most trustworthy creature on Earth, Hugh Grant. <laughs> and none of you realized it was happening. Like, and that's why science is amazing. And I hope you guys really um, soak in all the talks you're going to hear tonight, because you're going to hear a lot of really great theories, all of them true. So <laughs> thank you very much.